Welcome to the Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and thanks for joining us on the Broadcaster Podcast. You know, we've been going through this Identity in Christ series, and what great assurances that we have in God's Word, and because of His great grace and mercy toward us in Christ, we have all of this. That, that was essentially yesterday's message. If, if you missed it, here's a quick recap. Did you know that submitting to and belonging to Christ removes any condemnation in your life, no matter what you've done? This is for all those who walk in the Spirit and no longer continue to walk in the flesh or maturing in the Spirit and away from the flesh. I could say it that way. It would, that works as well. Along with that, your sin is removed and you are made righteous before God because of Christ paying the penalty and taking your sin nature and your sins away. You're completely forgiven. Again, no matter what the sin is. We also learned that in this relationship with God in Christ, we have all that we need in terms of provision and help because He knows best and will provide and withhold perfectly. Our job is to trust Him. Go back and listen to the podcast, to that's when and any other of the messages. If you're listening on WJMM 99.1 FM, thank you. That's Central Kentucky Christian Radio. But you can find it on WJMM.com. Click on the podcast tab and the Love and Lordship links, and you'll find today's and the previous two days, or you can go and find many more of these and other podcast videos and articles at loveandlordship.com. That's our ministry website from which the authority of love, the book, and this program is derived. So check those out. Share them with others. Uh, appreciate that. You can also contact me at loveandlordship at gmail.com. Thank you for those who have, for the encouragement, for questions and comments. I love it. Even if we disagree, love to engage with you. Be good for, for, for all of us. With that said, this, th today we're going to continue learning about our identity in Christ. And we're on the sixth one, so this is part six in this series. So we can know and love who we are enabling us to be, who Christ is enabling us to be and has made us to be so that we can better love others, all right? We start in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Paul's writing to the churches, a letter to Timothy that he delivers to them and to us today. For God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of love and power and self-discipline. Sound mind, sound judgment, a couple of translations say all of them are very good. I like the self-discipline one the best because I think it, it makes the point of how we are to live. In yesterday's post, if it didn't light a fire under you and the grace and mercy that we have as Brother Wayne Smith, a founding uh, uh, pastor, 40-year minister there at South and Christian Church who passed away a few years ago, but he would say, if that doesn't light your fire, then your wood's all wet. How awesome is it that God has recreated us in Christ for specific purposes that align with his kingdom will and that he will finish what he started. However, we've got to remember that he will never force the issue, but graciously and lovingly teach, guide, correct, and even punish as to move us forward and toward that end, that purpose, that kingdom will, as long as we will listen and submit. Now, he will also bless and encourage and fill, but all of that is done in his perfect love. With this in mind, we look at today's identity in Christ message. We find another incredibly reassuring and comforting passage, and yet it is one that is so often manipulated by our own flesh for our own selfish ends. Romans 8.28, most of you will probably know that, tells us that in every situation, circumstance, and outcome, good, bad, or ugly, right? God works in all of that for good, in and through those who love him and are called according to his purpose. What, what's it, what's, what are we called for? Not for our own ends or our own means, but for his purpose. Go back and look at yesterday's message. Only then are we, do we find ourselves most fulfilled, contented, and confident. When we find our purpose not in what we desire, but in Him and His desires for us, as they are always selfless, perfect, and loving, and far above and beyond our thoughts and ways. Look at Isaiah 55, 8 through 11. 
Ultimately, this is found in our eternal salvation, but it must be lived out in the here and now, right now. This means that my hardship may work in and through me as one who loves God to challenge, encourage, and or bless me or to do the same for others who love God and are called according to his purpose and love him. While it may certainly work out on the individual level, it is also much greater than this as it includes the influence and impact that he has through every believer and every situation on all those who love him and walk according to his will. So we've got to quit making it just individual and say, well, I love him and I'm called, so he's going to do good for me. He might take my struggles and trials and reach someone else and point them towards salvation. Isn't that good? So let me ask you this. Are you seeing his work in and through your life in every situation and calling it good according to his word, even when it may be difficult for you? Are you trusting in his word or in your emotions and circumstances? Christ has made it so that we can walk in his love, in our love for him, and in line with his kingdom will and purposes as we put our faith in him. Will you trust him no matter what? Do you know Christ as Savior and as Lord? If you have questions about that, again, contact me at loveandlordship at gmail.com. Now, as we continue to thank the Lord for all that he has given us and recreated us to walk in, knowing that we're secure in him, we look today at another reality, another truth about our identity in Christ that, as I read in the opening verse, that he has given us a spirit of love and power and self-discipline, a sound mind. We've not been given, in contrast, it says this in that same verse, we've not been given a spirit of fear or timidity. Which are you walking in? By faith, this should assure us that no matter what we face, what others say about us, or how the world and culture may look at us, rate us, or rank us, we can walk in confidence, boldness, and contentment because we know who we are in Christ. No fear of man, only fear and reverence of God, which is the beginning of wisdom, right? Proverbs 9, 10. In this, we walk out the love and power that he has placed within us and upon us and with the discipline of a sound mind, self-discipline to do so. What is your confidence and assurance found in? Is it fleeting and shallow because it's rooted in your flesh, selfish desires, the world, the culture, and its deceptions? and ever-changing standards in the enemy's use of all this? Or is it in the way, the truth, and the life that is Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that he has given us? All those who know Christ as Savior and walk with him as Lord, and that's crucial, are no longer slaves to fear because you are a child of God. Now, we've looked at all the ways we're accepted in Christ. That was our first few uh, uh, in the series, first few messages in the series. And we've been working through now all the ways that we are secure in him. We have a couple more to explore regarding this reality of our security in him. We are loved, forgiven, free, not condemned, always in his love, and, and much more. So we continue to look at this fact that as we receive Christ and are recreated in him, we are hidden with Christ in God. Look at Colossians 3, 2 and 3. That puts us in a very secure place. We have to walk it by faith because everything around us looks insecure and fearful. But this means that no matter what our trials and struggles, no matter how the enemy may come after us, we are assured by faith through grace that we can count on Christ to hide us from anything that would destroy us. It does not mean that we can live as we please and claim this promise or assurance or security. The next few verses in Colossians 3, 4 through 17, go on to state how we are to die to the old self of our own natural flesh, sinful, selfish, prideful desires, and how we now put on the new person in Christ. This is how we are hidden and secure in him. It also means that no matter what we face, as we turn to him by grace in faith, we can know that there will be nothing that can come against us that he doesn't already know and that he has not already overcome. He will provide the protection as we go through it and provide a way out, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 
Through his word and his spirit, he has already provided a way out, but we must choose being hidden with Christ by the Holy Spirit and the word. We must choose to do so and not choose to satisfy our sinful desires and then wonder why, why didn't you pull me out of it? Your word says you would because you, instead of choosing him, we chose our own selfish fleshly desires and then acted accordingly. He's already given us the way out in his word and by his spirit. Are you availing yourself of that? Here's our food for thought as we close out this week on this identity series. When you choose the truth that he has provided, you will always be able to walk away from that struggle or temptation by faith and or be strengthened to endure through it because you are hidden with God in Christ. By his spirit in you, you can choose the power, love, and self-discipline, really spirit discipline, but he gives us the option to choose it. So it's self-discipline by the spirit needed to make the decisions in keeping, li keeping in line with his truth and his will. This is the walk of faith that you can have when you are in Christ. Let me ask you, are you secure in your relationship with and in Christ? You can be. Contact us at loveandlordship at gmail.com if you want to know more. Here's your action items, four of them today. Read the scriptures in this episode and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Number two, journal what you've learned about your identity in Christ, your security in that identity in Christ in this message. Number three, reflect on and write about what it means for you to have a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline as you remain in Christ, hidden with God in Christ. And finally, number four, what does it mean for you to know that he is working all things for good as you love him and walk according to his purpose in his will? Continue with that. How does this give you confidence to know that you can face all struggles and temptations and that he provides a way out for you? He's already provided it. You can walk in it. Now join us tomorrow as we wrap up this great week with another wonderful interview with David Walls, Executive Director of Fam the Family Foundation on our fabulous Family Foundation Friday. Keep in mind that we are called to be salt and light in every area of our lives and culture as that is what salt and light represents. If we hide it away or fail to spread his word and stand firm in his truth, then our salt and light has little or no value. Be sure to invite family, friends, and loved ones, even enemies, to join us again so we can walk this out in every part of our lives and relationships. Check it out. Check us out again at loveandlordship.com. You can find the book there. There's an icon on the homepage. Click on that if you'd like to get one or several copies. Also, you can give there, the blue Give tab near the upper right. Click on that to give one time or ongoing. Thank you. All donations are tax deductible. We greatly appreciate that. And if it's not us, keep praying until the Lord shows you who he would like for you to partner with. Remember, he has a purpose and a plan. And if you continue to walk in it, your identity in Christ is secure because of what he's already done. Uh, as always, I want to say thank you for joining us and inviting others to do so. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day and God bless in Christ. Now, stay tuned for Bill Reeser Encounter that comes up right after this show. And then at 1245, you can check out my good friend Greg Horn and his show and program Hope is Here. It's touching, both of these are reaching and touching many lives for Christ. I'm Greg Williams, and as always, you're listening to The Authority of Love. <music>